Today's topic of discussion is drug therapy for bronchial asthma. Hello and welcome to Pharmacomania. I am Dr. Shannaz Malik and we are going to discuss pharmacotherapy for the bronchial asthma. So what is bronchial asthma? Bronchial asthma is chronic inflammatory disorder. There is impairment of airway due to contraction of bronchial smooth muscle. So bronchial spasm, swelling of the bronchial mucosa and increased bronchial mucus secretion. There is inflammation and hyper responsiveness of the airway. Several factors may precipitate attack of the asthma is susceptible individuals such as allergy, infection and psychological factors. So now, what is hyperresponsiveness of bronchial smooth muscle? It can be described in two terminology, hypersensitivity and hyperreactivity. So what is hypersensitivity? Hypersensitivity can be described a normal response at abnormal low level of stimuli. The airway of asthmatic constrict too readily. And hyperreactivity can be described as exaggerated response at normal to high level of stimuli. The airway response is too vigorous. Asthma triggering factors are like allergic factor and non-allergic factor. So allergic factor, uh, factors are like house dust mites, pollen, fungal spore and pets and non-allergic triggering factors are like exercise, food, drink, drug, viral infection, air pollution, smoking, psychological factor and uh, climate variation, gastroesophageal reflux and uh, uh, occupational factors. All these are factors which uh, precipitate or trigger the asthma. The airway obstruction in asthma is mainly due to release of mediator from the sensitized muscle in the lungs like histamine, serotonin, uh, prostaglandin, leukotriene and protease and platelet activating factor. These all are mediator uh, which releases from the muscle. The patient may have shortness of breath, wheezing, tightness in chest. Now, bronchial asthma, uh, it can be uh, episodic or it can be chronic. Due to stimulation of the mast cell and mediator release causes mediator constrict the bronchial smooth muscle, causes mucosal edema, hyperemia and produce viscid solution. All result in reversible airway obstruction. The inflammation perpetuate by cell to cell communication and recruit more and more lymphocyte, eosinophil and neutrophil. So bronchial smooth muscle hypertrophy can occur. So these are the airway of the, this is the airway of the normal person and this is the asthmatic person's airway. So first there is the wall is inflamed and thicker mucosal airway and in this the airway is inflamed during attack and tighten the smooth muscle and attract into alveoli. So this is the um, asthmatic patients airway inflamed mucosa tighten so air trapped in the alveoli uh, in response to triggering factor like uh, allergen infection exercise irritant it causes IgE type of mast cell mediated response and release of mediator from the mast cell like eosinophil, macrophage and lymphocyte. So there are two kind of the response occur, early phase response and delayed response. So in early phase response within 30 to 60 minutes, bronchial smooth muscle constriction, mucus secretion, vascular leakage and mucosal edema can occur. In late phase response, within 5 to 6 hours, infiltration of eosinophil and neutrophil, inflammation of bronchial hyperreactivity. Hyper within 1 to 2 days, infiltration of monocyte and lymphocyte can occur and ultimately response will be obstruction of large, large small airways, wrapping in alveoli, respiratory acidosis and hypoxia can occur. 
symptoms of the asthma will be shortening of uh, breath tightening of chest cough and wheezing all are in acute attack of asthma in uh, chronic attack of asthma there will be acute exacerbation of the acute attack now question is the how to treat asthma so there are various stages of the asthma and treatment is according to that stage so first of all we have to first is the bronchodilator drug in uh, bronchodilators which gives symptomatic relief to the patient next is there must be some inflammation of the mucous membrane of bronchus so uh, it should suppress by in, uh, uh, inhalatory corticosteroid third is the muscle stabilizer to stop the release of the mediator like leukotriene and histamine and physt from the muscle so we can stabilize the muscle by uh, muscle stabilizer fourth stage is the if already muscle is released and substance is released so we can antagonize this substance by leukotriene inhibitor and fifth stage is the already all substance are released inflammation is there and uh, patient is suffering so much so we can introduce anti ige antibodies like omalizumab so we have already discussed that treatment of bronchial asthma are in various stages so first of all we have to give symptomatic relief to patient so first group is the bronchodilator so in bronchodilator various drugs are available so first is the beta 2 agonist like sutamol terbutaline bambuterol salmeterol and formeterol these are beta agonist which dilate bronchi and give symptomatic relief second group is methylxanthine group theophylline aminophylline choline theophylline hydroxytheophylline and doxophylline these are bronchodilator but side effect are more than simple beta 2 agonist drug third group is anticholinergic drug like ipratropium bromide and diatropium bromide so these all are bronchodilator and dilate the bronchi and give symptomatic relief to patient second group is muscle stabilizer drugs are sodium chromoglycan and ketotifen when uh, asthma is already precipitated then we have to stop the release of inflammatory substance from the muscle so this drug sodium chromoglycan and ketotifen will inhibit the release of muscle and inhibit the release of Uh, inflammatory substance from the muscle if already muscle release the inflammatory substance then we can antagonize this substance by montelukast and zabcast these are the substance which antagonize the inflammatory substance now last stage is the corticosteroid which can be given by systemic as well as inhalatory so in initial stage of bronchial asthma we can give inhaler corticosteroid with bronchodilator in acute attack of uh, bronchial asthma there is no role of corticosteroid but it reduces or inhibit the inflammation of the mucosa so simultaneously in initial stage we can introduce inhaler corticosteroid so inhaler corticosteroids are beclomethazone vedesonide fluticasone flunisonide cislesonide these are inhaler corticosteroid and now systemic corticosteroid in chronic bronchial asthma and in drug um, patient is not relieved by any may any way then we can give systematically or uh, orally corticosteroid like hydrocortisone prednisolone and other glucocorticoids last drug is the anti immunoglobulin e antibodies like omalizumab these inhibit the inflammation or antigen antibody reaction is already happen in the body so we can neutralize the antibodies in the body by anti ige antibodies so here are the two type of the management first is the reliever or give the symptomatic relief to patient in acute attack of bronchial asthma and second one is the maintenance therapy or controller so first is the reliever by uh, giving bronchodilator like uh, beta 2 agonist methylxanthine and anticholinergic drug we have to dilate the bronchi and give symptomatic relief to patient second is the maintenance therapy already precipitated uh, bronchial asthma can be um, 
reduced by anti-inflammatory drug like a, a glucocorticoid, glucotron inhibitor, muscle stabilizer, and anti-IgE therapy. So here is the first group, bronchodilator group. There are three types of the bronchodilators. First is the beta-2 sympathomimetic drug, methylxanthine group, and anticholinergic drug. So beta-2 agonist are salbutamol, terbutalin, bambuterol, salmeterol, and formeterol. These are beta-2 agonist. Second group is methylxanthine group, theophylline, aminophylline, Choline theophylline, hydroxy theophylline, hydroxyethyl theophylline, and doxophylline. These are methylxanthine group. And third group is anticholinergic drug like protopium bromide and diatopium bromide. So, beta 2, selective beta 2 agonist uh, like salbutamol, terbital, informaterol, these all are selective beta 2 agonist, which uh, activate the beta 2 receptor and stimulate airway and inflammatory cell and it is potent bronchodilator. So there is a non-bronchodilator effect and it inhibit mast cell mediated release, reduction in plasma exudation, and increased mucociliary transport. So inflammatory cell express beta-2 receptor, but these are rapidly down-regulated. So no effect on airway inflammation. So these all are property beta-2 drug. So there are two types of beta-2 agonist, shorter acting beta-2 agonist and longer acting, long acting beta-2 agonist. Shorter acting beta-2 agonist are salbutamol, terbutalin and bambuterol. And longer acting beta-2 agonist are salmeterol and formeterol. Now there are two types of the beta-2 agonist, shorter acting and longer acting. So what are the pros and cons of the shorter acting? beta 2 agonist. First is the salbutamol, terbutalin, and uh, bambuterol are the short acting beta 2 agonist. Drug action start within 5 minutes and duration is for the 3 to 6 hours. So it is shorter duration of action only for 3 to 6 hours. So patient has to take uh, 4 times, 4 to 6 times in a day. Convenient rapid onset of action and without significant systemic side effect. It should be given through inhaler route and roll uh, uh, in in symptomatic relief on as and when required basis. It is only treatment required for mild to intermittent type of the asthma. So this is used in mild to intermittent type of asthma and it, is, it can be given as and when required basis and it is very convenient and rapid onset of action. Second is the longer acting beta 2 agonist like salmeterol and formaterol. These action is start within five minutes and duration is more than 12 hours. So it is convenient for patient, improve asthma control and reduce frequency of exacerbation of chronic asthma. It can be used in combination with inhaled corticosteroid therapy in low dose and it can it is available in fixed dose combination with corticosteroid and long acting beta 2 agonist and, and and it is very effective now beta 2 agonist drugs are given by inhalational route so there are many benefits of inhalation route first of all it it act directly at the site of action so direct exposure of drug at the site of action, rapid onset of action, minimal systemic absorption, so minimal systemic side effect occurs. Now systemic route, so there will be less bioavailability of drug, large dose is required and so more systemic side effect due to systemic route. So beta 2 agonist usually given through inhalational route. So here is the device, meter dose inhaler, which is used for inhalational route of drug administration in bronchial asthma. So this is meter dose inhaler. So this is mouthpiece and this is canister. Drug is in the canister. Whenever we press this canister, drug will release from the mouthpiece. But 
synchronization between pressing of canister and release of drug and inhalation of the drug should be there otherwise drug will stick in the mouth and sometimes we uh, provide this uh, um, corticosteroid through inhalational route so drug will stick in the mouth and adverse drug reaction like the uh, fungal reaction fungal uh, infection can occur in the oral cavity now adverse drug reaction of the beta 2 agonist there are some adverse drug reaction like muscle tremor it is dose related side effect uh, tachycardia uh, beta 2 agonist act on beta 2 receptor which are also present in the blood vessel if systemic absorption of the drug occur so it act on the uh, beta 2 receptor on blood vessel and reflex tachycardia can occur so tachycardia hypokalemia occur due to potassium into the uptake of potassium into skeletal muscle so hypokalemia tachycardia and tolerance these are the main adverse effect of the beta 2 agonist another adverse effect is tolerance uh, on continuous uh, treatment with beta 2 agonist can cause tolerance so corticosteroid can prevent the tolerance so there are three d d tremor tachycardia and tolerance due to beta 2 agonist uh, now second group is methyl xanthine group Medium potency bronchodilator like theophylline, theobromine, and caffeine. These all are present in beverages and all are alkaloid and having qualitatively similar action but markedly quantitatively and pharmacokinetic differences. Uh, methyl xanthine group drug are theophylline and aminophylline. Both are bronchodilator and anti inflammatory effect. Now, mechanism of action of methyl xanthine. Methyl xanthines are phosphodiesterase enzyme inhibitor. So, it inhibits phosphodiesterase enzyme and inhibit degradation of cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP. Ultimately, increase the level of cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP in bronchial smooth muscle and ultimately uh, increase uh, bronchodilatation occur due to increase the concentration of cyclic AMP. Methyl xanthine also act on uh, adenosine receptor and it antagonizes the adenosine receptor uh, which causes uh, bronchoconstriction and it inhibit bronchoconstriction and vas bronchodilatation occur due to adenosine receptor antagonism. Methyl xanthine also act as anti-inflammatory substance which uh, decreases eosinophil, decrease cytokines and decrease uh, mediator release. So it also act as an anti-inflammatory substance. So, pharmacological action of methyl xanthine group are uh, CNS effect like caffeine and theophylline are CNS stimulant. At lower doses, it produces cell, sense of well-being, alertness and bits boredom. LFRT thinking become clear and when uh, dullness has tended to prevail after sustained intellectual efforts. It tend to improve performance and increase motor activities. At higher doses, cause nervousness, restlessness, panic, and insomnia, and excitement can occur. And still higher doses, it produces tremor, delirium, and convulsion. Now, effect of uh, methyl xanthine group on CVS. So, directly stimulate the heart and increase force of myocardial contraction. Effect of uh, on heart rate is variable. Increase heart rate by cardiac action but decrease it by causing vagal stimulation so there uh, there is a variable effect on heart rate it can be uh, increased or it can be decreased so cardiac output and cardiac work are increased at higher doses and cardiac arrhythmia can occur the effect on blood pressure is variable now effect of methyl xanthine on smooth muscle all the smooth muscle are relaxed uh, especially uh, bronchial smooth muscle in uh, asthmatic patient and slow and sustained dose related bronchodilatation is produced but effect is much less marked compared to beta 2 agonist and vital capacity is increased uh, effect on intestine and urinary tract is negligible effect on kidney is mild diuresis on skeletal muscle enhanced contractile power of skeletal muscle at higher concentration of methyl xanthine increase release of 
calcium from sarcoplasmic reticulum by direct action on effect on stomach enhanced secretion of acid and pepsin in stomach and even uh, parent uh, parental injection metabolism caffeine and uh, to smaller extent of theophylline in, increase the basal metabolic rate plasma free fatty acid level are raised so pharmacokinetic of the methazanthin group are it absorb uh, well from orally as well as parenteral route distributed all over the distributed placenta extensively metabolized by liver and eliminated rate is very in different group age group and it can be given intravenously as well as orally and drug drug interaction is there so pharmacokinetic of methazanthin group is different from other group because it metabolizing enzyme rate are saturable half life is prolonged with higher dose to as much as uh, 60 hour as kinetic change from first order to zero, zero order kinetic and uh, narrow therapeutic window therapeutic range is 5 to 20 mg per liter factors which need dose adjustment in age above 60 years and congestive heart failure patient and liver failure so it should be take precaution before, before giving the theophylline or aminophylline in elderly patient chf patient and liver failure patient now factor affecting plasma level of theophylline drug uh, which are enzyme inducer like the uh, mainly cyp 1a2 by co-administered drug are rifampicin ethanol smoking and in childhood all these uh, condition where uh, which increase the metabolism of theophylline so those should be adjust according to it other drug are like uh, sabatirin erythromycin allopurinol ciprofloxacin which are enzyme inhibitor so decrease the metabolism of theophylline so it increase the concentration of theophylline and toxicity can occur now it was drug reaction of the theophylline at start of therapy dose uh, more than 20 mg per liter so anorexia nausea vomiting abdominal discomfort headache and anxiety can occur seizure and arrhythmia can occur at the concentration of more than 40 mg per liter and uh, diuresis inhibit tubular reabsorption of sodium and, and water and increase renal blood flow and gfr these are the adverse drug reaction so in this diagram we can see that drug is zero order kinetic and so it is saturated in the body and uh, have narrow therapeutic septimargin so first at the lower dose uh, minimal adverse effect like headache dyspepsia Uh, insomnia in minimal uh, dose then increase whenever increase the dose increase the adverse effect like tremor vomiting diuresis palpitation delirium severe status version agitation hypotension and flushing can occur at higher doses convulsion and arrhythmia can occur and ultimately death death can occur due to higher dose now uses of theophylline is recently declined in this class of group because it is third line adjuvant drug in mild to moderate asthma its efficacy is low side effect is more and poor tolerability and need of plasma concentration and level should be checked pharmacokinetic is it is uh, saturated kinetic so toxicity are more and availability of other effective and safer drug so it it is uh recently declined the use of theophylline but still it is widely used in uh, developing country due to lower uh, cost now anticholinergic drugs like uh, ipratropium bromide and diatropium bromide so ipratropium bromide uh, action mechanism of action is for 4 to 6 hours it is shorter acting and diatropium bromide is for 24 hours and long lasting and it is bronchodilator and less efficacious than 
and held beta 2 agonist in bronchial asthma. It blocked the M3 receptor which caused bronchoconstriction and it inhibit the constriction through, through antagonized M3 receptor and route of drug administration is inhalation. So now indication of the anticholinergic drugs are vagal tone prominent in bronchoconstriction of COPD patient. It is more effective in COPD patient as adjuvant uh, treatment of asthma and systemic anticholinergic side effect can occur to anticholinergic drug. So inhaled anticholinergic drug produces lower response and then the beta 2 agonist and are better suited for the regular prophylactic use in the bronchial asthma. Uh, they are bronchodilator of choice of, uh, for the COPD patient. A reflect cholinergic tone appear to be the major reversible component of airway obstruction in COPD. Now combination of inhaled ipratropium bromide and beta 2 agonist produces marked and longer lasting bronchodilator effect is additive used in bronchial asthma. So it can be combined with beta 2 agonist for longer lasting effect. Now anti-inflammatory drugs like corticosteroid, leukotriene antagonist, uh, muscle stabilizer and anti-IgE antibodies. So first is the muscle stabilizer drugs, uh, sodium chromoglycate and ketotipen, a leukotriene inhibitor as montelicast and zephylicast, corticosteroid are systemic as well as inhaler. So inhaler are beclomethazone, bidazonide, proticazone and systemic are hydrocortisone, pedalone and other glucocorticoids. And last one is the anti-IgE antibodies like omalizumab. So, uh, Corticosteroid act as anti-inflammatory action in asthma, decrease eosinophil from the mass cell, uh, decrease production of inflammatory mediators, decrease cytokine release like uh, reduces interleukin 4 and 5, decrease airway edema and uh, decrease airway hyperresponsiveness. So corticosteroid afford more complete and sustained symptomatic relief than the bronchodilator and chromoglycate. It improve airflow, reduce asthma, exacerbation, influence airway remodeling, retard disease progression, increase peak expiratory flow rate, reduce need for rescue beta 2 agonist inhalation. So these all are benefit of the corticosteroids. So these all are inhaled corticosteroid, beclomethazone, cisplosonide, fruticazone and fruticazone. So nice. All are inhaled corticosteroid and it uh, used in maintenance therapy for the asthmatic patient. So the peak effect uh, seen after four to seven days of sustained inhaled steroid and benefit persistent for few weeks after discontinuation of the steroid reduces need for rescue beta 2 agonist inhaled and prevent episode of acute asthma. However, it is no, no role of the corticosteroid in acute attack of the bronchial asthma or status asthmaticus. Uh, inhaled corticosteroids st should start with 100-200 microgram BD and titrate dose upward every 3-5 to five days. Maximum dose should be 400 microgram 4 times a day. Uh, so less systemic availability, less adverse drug reaction, adverse drug reaction like uh, dysphonia and candidiasis can see due to drugs stick in the oral cavity and candidiasis can occur. Systemic adverse effect only seen with the larger doses. Adverse effect of corticosteroid are like hoarseness of uh, voice and uh, sore throat and asymptomatic or symptomatic oropharyngeal candidiasis due to drugs stick into the mouth and systemic effects is systemic side effect uh, seen after more than more than 600 microgram per day dose so mood swing osteoporosis uh, uh, growth retardation early cataract bruising hyperglycemia pituitary suppression all these adverse effects seen after system more than absorption of the more than 600 microgram per day now clinical status of inhaled corticosteroid in asthma it indicate all cases of persistent asthma, asthma when inhaled beta 2 agonist required daily. So in, the, in uh, that patient who are taking beta 2 agonist in daily basis, they should continue with the 
inhaled corticosteroid so route of drug administration should be uh, inhaled or systemic route inhaled corticosteroid has a marked change in the outlook uh, on asthma therapy but long term systemic steroid therapy has its own adverse drug reaction which may worse than asthma itself so it can be given to inhaler route but systemic route should be avoided so here is the candidial infection due to corticosteroid uh, stick in the mouth during inhalation of the drug so these are the candidial infection in oral cavity now corticosteroid through the uh, systemic route like oral as well as intravenous so drugs are hydrocortisone and prednisolone can be given by this route and drugs should start from 20 to 60 mg daily and indications are chronic asthma and not controlled by inhaled corticosteroid and status asthmaticus this is the uh, indication for oral and intravenous corticosteroid now next group is the leukotriene antagonism drug are zefilucas and montelukast this drug are uh, uh, leukotriene c4 and d4 inhibitor and bronco constriction occur due to so leukotriene c4 and d4 it inhibited by leukotriene antagonists like zefilucast and montelukast triggering factor like allergen cold exercise which stimulate mast cell and eosinophil which releases arachidonic acid which act on uh, which releases cysteine leukotriene which act on the cysteine t1 receptor which are located at the plasma uh, on the uh, mucosa and uh, bronchus smooth muscle and eosinophil which causes plasma exudation mucus secretion and um, smooth muscle constriction and eosinophil recruitment all these inhibited by leukotriene inhibitors now leukotriene antagonists like zefilucas and montelukas it inhibit cysteine leukotriene one receptor and reduce sputum eosinophil count mucus and hyperreactivity bronchodilatation occur and suppress bronchial inflammation so clinical status of uh, leukotriene inhibitor it can be used as a prophylactic therapy for mild to moderate asthma as alternative to inhaled corticosteroid it may obviate need in, in inhaled steroid and it uh, more acceptable in children and side effect are like uh, headache rashes and eosinophilia and neuropathy Now zilutron is a phylox inhibitor which reduces leukotriene synthesis and it is uh, limited in use due to hepatotoxic uh, side effect. Now mast cell stabilizers like sodium chromoglycate and ketotifen these are the mast cell uh, stabilizer. So it is act by inhibiting inhibiting degradation of mast cell by uh, trigger stimuli release of mediator of asthma like histamine leukotriene platelet activating factor interleukins etc are restricted because it inhibit degradation of the mast cell chemotaxis of inflammatory cell is inhibited and decrease the cellular inflammatory response bronchial hyperreactivity is reduced by variable extent and long term treatment so a uh, bronchospasm induced by allergen irritant cold air exercise may attenuated and mediated through delayed chloride channel its action is through delayed type of chloride channel so muscle stabilizers are not bronchodilator they only inhibit the release of substance from the muscle which are producing inflammation like histamine acetylcholine leukotriene platelet activating factor these all substances are released from the mast cell and produce inflammation so it is inhibited by this uh, leukotriene uh, mast cell stabilizer if once uh, uh, this mast cell are released substances are released from the mast cell then this drug is not effective so it is not effective in acute attack of bronchial asthma it can be given as a prophylactic drug so adverse drug reaction are it is well tolerated poor water soluble and minimal absorption 
So minor side effect are like uh, throat irritation, cough and mouth dryness and readily chest pain, uh, chest tightness and wheezing can say. Now another group is the anti IgE antibodies like omalizumab. So omalizumab is monoclonal antibody and it block binding of IgE to IgE receptor on the mast cell and prevent their activation by allergen. So it is uh, used in very severe type of asthma who are poorly controlled on steroid and it is very expensive drug. Now let's see stepwise management of asthma. Now here is the stepwise management of asthma. There are various stages like mild intermittent, mild uh, persistent, moderate persistent, severe persistent and very severe persistent asthma. So first of all, salt acting beta 2 agonist should be given in every stage. First of all, only um, in mild intermittent asthma, only beta 2 agonist, short acting beta 2 agonist should be provided uh, second stage is the mild persistent asthma when short acting beta 2 agonist should be provided as well as inhaled corticosteroid in lower dose should be given third stage is moderate persistent asthma where beta short acting beta 2 agonist should be given with inhaled corticosteroid in lower dose and longer acting beta 2 agonist should be given severe persistent asthma where beta 2 shorter acting beta 2 agonist should be given inhaled corticosteroid in higher doses and longer acting beta 2 agonist should be given. Fourth, fifth stage is very severe persistent bronchial asthma where beta 2 shorter acting as well as inhaled corticosteroid in higher dose and longer acting beta 2 agonist and oral corticosteroid should be given. So these are the various stepwise management of asthma. So here is the various devices for the inhalation. First is the metadose inhaler and second one is the spacer pitted on metadose inhaler. So whenever drug is released from the metadose inhaler, drug remain in the spacer and this is especially used for the pediatric patient who are not able to synchronize between a release of drug and inhalation of drug. So drug uh, stick in the oral cavity. So spacer is uh, beneficial for the pediatric patient where whenever drug release uh, drug remain in the chamber and whenever a uh, pediatric patient or child will inhale drug will inhale through inhalation uh, this is electronic device nebulizer uh, where drug is very minute uh, in molecule and it goes through bronchial through uh, in very forceful manner. So it reaches in the minute or minor bronchioles. So nebulizer due to smaller particle size and continuous release of the drug reaches to the smallest bronchioles even in the presence of impaired ventilation. So synchronization is not required in nebulizer. Now acute severe asthma or status asthmaticus. This is the condition where acute exacerbation of asthma that remain unresponsive to initial treatment with bronchodilator and this is emergency condition. So how to treat status asthmaticus? So first of all inhale uh, oxygen inhalation then uh, nebulize uh, salbutamol 0.5 to 5 milligram plus tracopium bromide intermittently intravenous hydrocortisone 100 milligram state and followed by IV infusion uh, hydrocortisone and after discharge from hospital we can shift uh, on the oral corticosteroid prednisolone 20 milligram and injection salbutamol 0.4 milligram subcutaneously intravenous fluid correction of the dehydration injection sodium, sodium bicarbonate to treat acidosis, antibiotic to treat infection and mechanical ventilation if required. So this is the treatment of acute exacerbation or status asthmaticus. Thank you for watching the video.